so this is an edit of a landscape I took yesterday. It's a Ribblehead Viaduct in the Yorkshire Dales. It's taken with a three stop ND grad on top and a uh, 10 stop filter, so it's a 30 second exposure. The filter does give quite a blue cast, so I'm going to cure that first by just upping the temperature. There we go, so that looks a bit more like what it was on the day. Um, we could maybe just try with the white balance going to this area here, which was quite um, colourless. The sunset was going on in this direction, and this end area here was quite colourless on the night. Okay, so you can see the, the, the histogram was pretty much all in one shot, nothing clipping on either edges, so we can play around with it a little bit. Let's try and get a bit of detail back in these highlights over there. Uh, if we open the shadows up, we get much more going on in the foreground. The little van down there, look if you can see it. Uh, a little bit of clarity. Uh, right, I'm going to do the alt key and white to the right just to bring some highlights in and get a bit of punch. I'm going to put alt key blacks to the left. Just wait until those bits of yellow start to turn black. Maybe push back a little bit because there's a bit of clipping going on there. And we get a slightly more punchy kind of looking scene. Next, I'm actually going to increase the contrast by using the, um, the curves. So if you click on this little tool here and go to your shot and click on something, keep your finger on the button and move it upwards, it brightens it. It moves the curve upwards, and conversely, if you go downwards, which I'm going to do on the edge of this bridge here because that's quite dark, it just adds a little bit more contrast there. Next, I think the train line's level, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try this. Obviously, there's perspective involved, so it might look a bit weird. Almost looks like Ingeborg is toppling over there, doesn't it? Um, What I'm looking at is this drain pipe on here. One of the faults I find with Lightroom is if you go to the angle tool and you want to draw a line down something vertical, you can't zoom in and do it. As far as I know, anyway, let's just try. You know, I'm pressing Ctrl and Plus, and it's not allowing me to do so. Right, I'm going to press Escape to come out of that, so close. Oh, let's just go back and make the crop a bit bigger. Do the crop to taste anyway, that's probably my, my advice. Um, right, I think the lower and upper parts of this photo do need a little bit of separate processing. So for the top bits, I'm going to drag down a grad, darken it a little bit, not much, about there, just so it's believable. Add a bit of clarity, which always makes skies that a bit more interesting, and maybe a little bit of saturation, and warm it up if you want with the temperature slider, not doing a great deal, but if you take it down you can see it goes blue, if you take it up it goes a little bit more orange, so let's press T for toolbar, let's OK that, and then do the same for the lower bit, so this is going to affect below the bridge and on the bridge, so let's say, ooh, Oh no, I've done that the wrong way around. Just ignore that. There we go. You drag upwards to affect the lower bit, that's to prove that. If I take the exposure down, you get black. Okay, so you click where you drag upwards, and anything below that will become uh, part of the mask. You can see, if you want to see the mask, it's down here, this little checkbox. Right, so clarity makes it very punchy indeed, but there's a lot of fine detail in the grass and the brickwork on this. I'm going to really go to town on the sharpening. I think maybe the shadows could come up a little bit. And the saturation. 
just to give it uh, that foreground a little bit more interest than it currently you know, what about the highlights there's not a lot of highlight going on in there it's all fairly middle toned the highlights in the sky uh, so for a flat sunset we're kind of working through quite a bit of processing I've just spotted um, a massive dust bunny got into the camera at this stage I normally do my dust busting in Photoshop because Lightroom's not it's all right it's not as good as Photoshop though. Let's just see. Okay, that's done a decent job. Um, so moving down, you can play the saturation a little bit. You can make the these orange tones over here a little bit more prevalent by upping the orange saturation, either by dragging the sliders or um, <coughs> or using this little dropper tool. This satisfying, you know, this um, direct adjustment tool. Uh, Got to make the blue sky. You see, all, all, I don't really recommend playing with blues too much because it can tend to leave. See this noisy pattern it leaves. Uh, if you're going to play with blues, do it very subtly, like that. Now um, we've done quite a lot of sharpening already in the uh, grab tool, so I'm not going to bother with that. There's no noise. I'm going to ch click the chromatic aberration and profile so it's recognized I've got a Canon and a 16 to 35 lens. We've already done the uh, leveling to taste. And finally, let's come down to this big net. So, as usual, I like a very soft big net and a fairly small center. And then switch it off and then slowly just add it a little bit in we're looking for an almost unnoticeable vignette so anybody watching it uh, well looking at it wouldn't realize it's been vignetting um i reckon for a color shot that's probably where i'd get to but then think hang on let's have a look at a black and white so there's a free plugin suite called the nick google nick uh, plugins and they've got all these great filters here so let's have a look at silver effects pro this is a one which creates black and whites so to access that I've right clicked on the picture I'll do it again right click on the picture edit in silver effects pro <coughs> click OK so this launches a plugin called silver effects pro which will pop up on the screen any minute now, there we go. It's generating a 16 bit TIFF uh, full resolution version of this photo. So it takes a few seconds and then it pops Silver Effects Pro. And like many plugins, it's got lots and lots of lovely presets for you here. So you can look at the underexposed one, overexposed. Quite like that actually. High contrast. So a smooth, high structure, the harsh one or the soft one. Now that's that's appealing. And then you've got it just easy to go down, just click on a few, low key one, high key one, push process. The simulating what black and white photographers used to do back in there. Well, I always quite like this fine art process one. I think it's something that either has no detail. I mean, look at that. That's a uh, what's it called? Cool tones. So it's got rid of Ingleborough altogether. There's a. You can get crazy frames as well. So that's the sort of thing Nick does. I'm going to go back to. So look at full dynamic range, and the other one was high structure. Okay, so like uh, Lightroom itself, it's got loads and loads of um, sliders on the side, like that. So you can play with the brightness, the individual bits. So if, you want, if the highlights are a bit dark, you can brighten them, or if they're a bit bright, you can darken them separately, like that. So mid tones. It's all about make, making it your own, really. This sounds a bit X Factor, that actually. <laughs> 
what am I looking for? Well, the great thing is you don't really have to know. You can have a little play. Once you get used to them, you do um, get used to what does what and you know, what your favourite look is. I keep an eye on the histogram down here because I don't want anything to be too blown out. Structures like clarity, contrast is contrast, so structure makes uh, things stand out. Um, got different filter effects, as you can click through. Red will make the sky a bit darker. Blue will make anything that's warm look dark, so the grass has disappeared. Grass is green, so the um, foreground's a bit brighter. Grass is also yellow, greeny yellow, orange, red, and then no filter. So I quite like the brighter grass that the yellow one gave. Um, you can tone it, I've got all the traditional toning things, so it's a bit of sepia or ambro type, whatever that was. Might go for a bit of sepia look. And you can even even add more vignetting on here if you wanted to. They've got a few presets for you there. I think we've already got enough vignetting. You can do a lot more, uh, there's things called control points which allow you to do more selective stuff, these things here, um, but that's probably a separate tutorial. So once you've got that how you like, you click save and it re-imports it back into Lightroom for you pretty quickly. So from that one raw file which I will regenerate. So if I click on the original shot and do create virtual copy, and reset that, uh, so that's to zoom out to full screen. So that's Control minus. So that's the original shot. So color version and that's a sepia version original color sepia all done pretty quick really so you can work quite fast once you get used to Lightroom and if you really like the look of that you can save it as a preset so let's show you how you do that just as a bit of a Brucey bonus so when you're in develop you get um, presets and at the top here you've got plus. I'm going to call it Dull Day Yorkshire Yorkshire Landscape. Because it was quite dull. Uh, you can create different folders for all your um, presets to go into. Uh, I'm going to just put it in my fade presets one. Uh, and then you just work through all the different settings you changed. I'm not going to give it any settings for the white balance because that's different every day and I used a bluish filter on this one. I only changed everything but the exposure there. I did change the tone curve, clarity and sharpening. I did change the colour. I didn't do any split toning. I'll leave the grad filters um, separate because each photo is different. Didn't do any noise reduction. Did the lens corrections and a bit of big netting. Oof, that's so. So that's there for future. All right. I hope that was helpful.